Hey everyone, this is James from TDB bringing you another in between episode. It is time to get caffeinated. Today we have a big recipe battle, the 7542 versus 8582. This is one of those episodes ideas I probably had for eight years now. Um, but, you know, yeah, drinking two factory teas back to back, side by side, uh, is a way to kind of uh, just be extremely caffeinated and very energized. So, I, I think I'm finally ready for it. Uh, it's time to go and compare these two classic recipes. Um, so, you know, as usual, it's hard to find the absolute perfect uh, comparison. And in my opinion, an imperfect comparison is often better than no comparison at all. When people talk about, uh, you know, famous recipes and famous things done by the big factories, these are definitely two of the biggest three recipes i'd say i'd toss eight six five three in there too that you're gonna ever run across so and i i think absolutely both worth trying and very different from one another um these are both made by Monghai tea factory and they've both been featured on the channel many times uh i think 7542 was featured in something like episode six i did a quick search and even excluding i believe the cnn p 7542s which are not really the same thing as a die 7542 this is featured on the channel i think something like nine times so this will be the 10th 8582 six times two so these are the two biggest um and you know what i mean we have something like 700 videos so it in 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 terms of importance it probably should be featured even more um so yeah these are uh really uh really big important recipes and definitely benchmarks worth trying for everyone involved so uh, i would recommend even people that don't like factory tea uh, to give these two teas a try uh, not too hard to find uh, good examples. Uh, they're both highly produced teas. They they are made in huge quantity. I definitely highly recommend people get sort of more aged examples of them that have had either Southern Chinese, Taiwanese, Malaysian storage, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, any of those should be fine. Uh, you definitely, these are recipes that, uh, you know, they have changed throughout the years, but generally speaking, age is good uh, with them. And uh, yeah, so these are both from 2007, which is kind of an interesting year. It's the year that there were the poor production really amped up uh, and then the bubble burst a bit. Of course, since then, it certainly recovered a lot. Um, and so it's been one of those years that you can find tea relatively inexpensively, uh, including the years after that too. Uh, 2005, 2004, 2006, those are definitely uh, a little more expensive uh, than stuff from kind of this next era of poor that comes here. Anyways, it's not super important for this. Um, yeah, you can, uh, yeah. So, uh, and uh, as I was saying, this is kind of an imperfect comparison. These teas are both 16 years old. I believe they both had Taiwanese storage. They don't come from the same place. The batch can also be very important when it comes to these teas. Um, I think it becomes like a little bit less important as we get on into the years like 2010, 2011. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. Uh, but when it comes to certain years, uh, there's like, oh yeah, the batch four is the, the best one there. So anyways, uh, the 2008, uh, the 2007, eight, five, eight, two, I actually don't know, uh, what batch that is, but the seven, five, four, two was the seven, oh, four batch. They come from two different Taiwanese vendors. So you know what? The storage is going to be a little different, but, uh, we're going to roll with it. Uh, anyways, so the reputation for these two teas and my expectations are we have the 7542 over here on my left and it's known to be uh, like sharper, bitter, definitely one uh, for the aging. A582 uh, might age a little faster. For me, at least, I'm okay drinking an A582 a little bit younger. Uh, it has a little bit more of a rounder taste. And again, if you don't know what those numbers mean, 75 uh, in the 7542 means it was developed in 1975. The four stands for leaf grade, which is leaf size. So it goes zero to nine. So four would be kind of in the middle uh, as far as like the blend of different leaf sizes and things like that. 8582 developed in 1985. The second eight in there stands for the leaf grade. So we're using bigger leaves here. Um, so it does line up that we would expect it to be a, a little more um, kind of rounder and uh, softer around the edges, but uh, have kind of a nice profile. So I'm a fan of both recipes. I've probably actually consumed more 8582 than 7542 uh, in my uh, in my life. But uh, yeah, I, I, I do like both and I think both are worth uh, pursuing. So let's get on to the comparison. Um, and I'm actually going to try the 7542 first. Usually I prefer to try, um, like if I'm doing a session with friends or something, I try to try the softer tea first and then go stronger. 
but it's good to mix things up and just see how perceptions are shifted and changed. So going to be drinking both these teas and talk about how they line up or don't line up with my expectations for this session. Okay, so here we go. We have the 7542 over here on my left side and 8582 over here on my right. Um, I have just made steep number one for both of these teas. Mm, that is some Mung Hai tea. Fresh hay, very classic poor nose to that. 8582, woodier. Little darker smelling. Um, again, uh, they brewed a similar color. 8582 might be slightly darker. Uh, a little hard to say, you know. Cheers. Mm, that is immediately quite bitter from the get-go. A little fruity, too. Uh, I would say the flavor is something like 65% fruit, 35% wood. And uh, contrary to popular, popular belief, especially when you get uh, 7542 that with a little bit of age, it's not all bitter. There's definitely some bitterness integrated within it, uh, kind of like this mineral grain bitterness, but with like the fruit flavor of it is a little sweet. <sighs> yeah, not bad, not bad. Uh, very uh, middle of the road, I'd say the body uh, the body will probably thicken up a little bit, but it's, you know, medium, medium low right now, probably thicken up to be uh, a little stronger. Um, so yeah, nice sweetness that lingers. Um, the aftertastes are going to be a little hard to discern because we're going to be going back and forth. Uh, so here is the 852, 8582. Cheers. Okay. So definitely less bitter. Uh, one note that I'm getting that I don't always get in this, and I think it might be with the contrast, is a little creamier. Definitely the predominant flavor is wood. Um, I'm trying to detect if there's kind of any fruity sweetness to this at all. Maybe a very small amount. Maybe it's something like 15% uh, fruit. But this is way woodier uh, than the uh, 7542. One thing to note, too, is I, I did say how these teas have different uh, storages. Uh, we would expect that um, the storage would come out, especially in the early steeps, if it's going to come out. Uh, I am using 5 grams for about 70 milliliters here on the Gaiwan. So, um, you know, using a pretty typical ratio for myself. It's definitely a little simpler, the 8582. Okay, so this time let's start with the 8582 and go over to the 7542 second. Don't need to steep these for too long. Um, these are definitely not um, very forgiving steeps. I would say neither of them are. Yeah, the creepiness is quite interesting for the 8582. I'd say the body of it is a little stronger too compared to the 7542. So we'll pour these steeps and then take a smell of both. Okay, so I think there is a color difference. I think the 8582 is brewing darker. Of course, if you wanted it to be perfect, probably should have brought out another uh, Chahai Kong Dao Bay, but that's fine. Definitely a little brighter. And you know what? Uh, I had both of these teas earlier this week, uh, just kind of in preparation for this. The age difference definitely way more striking, uh, the biological difference when you have them side by side. So there's certain things that, you know, I had these in consecutive days but there are certain things you can pick up having the teas actually uh, side by side or on the same day versus uh, if you had them like Wednesday and then Thursday. So yeah, still pretty woody on that 8582 in particular. Uh, cheers. So 
so maybe a little more sharpness on the 8582 maybe a slight bit more bitterness but very very i'd say 80 per, 80 to 90 percent similar to the initial steep hmm. okay yeah pretty good uh overall i'd say this is definitely the simpler uh simpler thing and you, this would this is settling into kind of being like a really nice daily drinker profile which i don't say as an insult at all to be clear so i want to go uh probably four steeps on these uh you know ideally you'd go all the way to the end of the session but i don't want to drink that much tea on camera i'd rather slow down at a certain point so uh here is the 7542 That's nice. I'd say the profile of the 7542 is a fair bit more complex uh, compared to the 8582. Uh, there's minerals and grains going on that. It's not as smooth, um, just profile-wise, and it's a little thinner. Um, so those would be kind of the main problems with the 8582, I think, seems a lot more ready to be consumed. Um, Yeah, this definitely crosses me as a tea uh, that would benefit from another five years or so. It's definitely getting there. Uh, it has a real nice fruity sweetness and uh, some minerals and resinous activity going on, uh, which, you know, makes it probably the more interesting tea at this point to the 8582. But, um, you know, it's up front. Uh, it's going to be a little finicky. It's not quite as um, it's a little thin on the thin side, too, uh, would be kind of uh, the main complaint. Okay. But yeah, I do find it striking that the bitterness isn't even more um, upfront for this tea. It's definitely there, and there's definitely more of it than the 8582. But uh, the fact that it's not overwhelming, uh, and especially when you can do these contrasts, like if you compare like a wooey oolong, if you do a wooey oolong, then you do almost any pour, the pour is going to taste very bitter. So the fact that the bitterness is, you know, not out of this world for the 7542, I consider it to be kind of a good sign for the drinkability of this tea uh, soon. Okay, so we'll do steep number three, starting with the 7542, and then we will reboil before we do uh, steep number four. And maybe steep number four will extend it a little longer. Just get a little more robustness going on. Test really stress test the teas. Yeah, and the color difference is more and more apparent. Each steep that goes on, tried to use pretty similar material, um, but yeah. Um, color wise, yeah, the A582 is a little darker, so possible that the storage could explain at least a good chunk of that. It's not traditionally stored by any means, but it does certainly have a darker smell to it, and the uh, 7542 has kind of more of the raisins and things like that. Uh, the 7542 is from Tai Shenhe, uh, so that's a very reliable vendor from Taijong. Uh, cheers. Hmm, losing just a little bit of steam there. Interesting. This is uh, falling off a, a touch faster. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll hit it. Uh, it's possible the water cooled down slightly too much, but a little more watery, even though the body is coming in a little more. Uh, not quite as complex as steep number two. But very drinkable. The steep is very drinkable. Not, not very bitter at all. Okay, then let's go to the 8582 and reboil this water. Cheers. <laughs> Swain me back. The 8582 is very nice on this steep. Um, 
just like kind of a comfort brew almost. Um, certainly more aged than I would have expected. And yeah, it's just kind of like this really woody uh, flavor. Not particularly earthy. It's not at that phase of it yet, but... I think if it had continued along the storage trajectory, it probably would end up in uh, that sort of profile. Okay, so we will give both of these another steep. We're not gonna brew too long, but we'll give it, I don't know, 20 seconds. Let's see what happens. Let me know what your guys' experiment uh, experience is with these recipes, which one you prefer, or if you have another Monkai Tea Factory recipe you like. Going to be bringing on probably the third most uh, well-known recipe uh, at some point. Uh, third most famous raw recipe from Monkai Tea Factory 7532 uh, sometime in this cycle. It's one that has been featured, I think, just once or twice uh, in the past. Um, collectively, the aftertaste of both of these teas is quite nice. Just leaving a nice general sweetness there. It's one of the reasons to like poor for sure. Um, it's like often this like a little more upfront bitter profile, uh, but followed by kind of like this really nice sweetness. I'd say that's one of the chief appeals of Mung Hai teas, uh, Mung Hai area as well as Mung Hai Tea Factory. Uh, yeah, it's just the way that it sort of lingers in the mouth. And so it can have a pretty strong profile. Uh, some people brewed the especially strong when I went to Hong Kong once. Uh, a lot of people brewed very similar to how I brew, but uh, one guy in particular brewed tea so strong uh, that I could not believe it almost. <laughs> so, uh, and, and those teas will obviously be extremely uh, strong and bitter up front, but even then uh, the aftertaste shines through. So, uh, yeah, uh, and, and in general, I mean, these teas are both more similar to each other than perhaps like a uh, Ibu tea would be uh, from a boutique vendor if you were to compare them to them. So they're both very uh, much kind of Monghai Tea Factory teas, but showing kind of the different uh, flavors, different things that you can, profiles that you can get depending on the leaf grade and just how it's blended. So kind of like those grapes and raisins uh, coming through on the 7542. Again, a darker smell for the 8582. Cheers. So we're on the 8582 right now. Uh, it is definitely more bitter. I'd say it's more bitter than the third seep of the 7542. Still has kind of like that creaminess to it. Uh, I would say this is definitely a little overbrewed, according to my taste. But not bad. Still perfectly drinkable. I would drink this. I wouldn't dump it necessarily. Yeah, so woody, creamy. The profile remains the same. It just becomes a little bit stronger. Uh, the body is medium. Uh, yeah, medium. I wouldn't say quite medium high. Okay, and so now we go to 7542. Um, our expectations for this is that this would come across pretty bitter. Probably too bitter. So let's see where we are. Cheers. Yeah, it's pretty bitter. Um, yeah, it's starting to blend into like that aspirin bitterness. There's enough fruitiness there to cut it just a bit, but I would say this steep uh, compared to the 8582 is significantly overbrewed. So it kind of lines up with my expectations that this 8582 is a little more ready. And I think part of that is the blend and part of it is the storage. If I were to attribute it uh, right now, I'd probably say 60% storage, 40% the blend. Um, I have a 2006 8582 that is a little brighter than this one. That one actually does come from uh, Taishan He. It's a little fruitier, I'd say, and I think that might have to do with the storage uh, as well. Uh, I think in general, 8582 is a little more on the woody side compared to 7542, which will kind of mix those fruit and those woods. So uh, a very interesting comparison. I'd say it mostly lines up with my expectations there, uh, where this 8582, I think, is more or less ready to drink. 7542, oh, I could definitely use more time. Uh, I mean, this fourth brew that I did for both of them, uh, the 7542, I would not drink this as I'm going to do now. Uh, <laughs> toss that out. And the 8582 is still drinkable, if not a little too strong. Um, okay, so let me know how you like these recipes. Let me know how you like this episode. 
Um, and I will see y'all next time. Cheers.